Uh, all right, let, let's talk about Okada because I did feel for you a little bit last night when I saw the time. I, I felt for me too, believe me. And I thought we were just going to get like two paragraph story, but no, you wrote you wrote the you know you wrote a long story about it. There's, and there's a lot there's a there's a lot to talk about here. I mean, this is something unprecedented in wrestling history. There's mm -hmm. never it has never been the top guy in Japan has never signed with the U.S. company. I mean, Nakamura is the closest, and he was number three in his promotion, and and maybe even number three in all of Japan. But the top, and if he was was one or two, he probably would have stayed, right? It's hard to know, you know, what his goal would have been. You know, it's it's a different it's a different world now. Um, you know, before when you were number one in Japan, the option of making more money in the United States really wasn't there. You know, in the sense of would Anoki have made more money leaving to go to W? Not, not a chance. He wouldn't have made anywhere close to what he made. So why would he go? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, th they were bigger than we were. Um, Tanahashi, um, the thing with Tanahashi was, is there was not that great respect for the top Japanese guy. Like it wasn't, we, we there was no AEW. TNA had Tanahashi on dates and never really did anything with him because they, you know, their mentality was never that these guys could be top guys. They're just guys. And WWE had the same mentality. So it's like Tanahashi never had people breaking down his doors. Okada, you know, was the first one of this generation where, you know, it's already proven. You know, like when he was the last time he was in Philadelphia and they moved all those tickets at the end. Um, when you see Forbidden Door and how big it is, when you when he when when those guys on Okada would go to Ring of Honor and they would sell, you know, and they people would flood to buy tickets by Ring of Honor standards to see him. We already know people know who he is i mean it's not like um you know you know what i mean it's like he already has the aura and it's funny because with aew i started thinking about it and it's like i kind of like the idea if if i'm an aew i kind of like the idea of okada twice a year and maybe on a couple of uh, dynamites and 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 that's about it as opposed to a weekly character because i think as a weekly you know i mean i think he's better off as as like a brock lesnar for aew mm -hmm. than than a weekly character but it's you know i mean it's just the nature of the beast there's more money to be made in the united states and and he's 36 years old and his body you know his body's hurting too yeah you know i mean he's got the knees and everything the neck and all that problem so it's kind of like you know you get to that point of like you know what i mean i should try to make some money and if he wants to have great matches it's not you know it's not like before where it's like, okay, I got to give up having good matches. You know, it's like, he wants to have great matches. Look at the opponents he's got in in AEW and in, even in WWE. WWE, it's more of an uncertain thing because you don't know because I think that the WWE audience is not as familiar with New Japan as the AEW audience is. So, um, but, I, but, you know, I mean, it could surprise people. I mean, I remember, you know, again, when AJ showed up and I, and people go, oh, AJ was in TNA for years, which he was, but he hadn't been in TNA for how many years? And the reaction he got was, was because he was a star in New Japan, you know, and, and people were aware of New Japan and they're aware of New Japan now. So, I, I mean, even in WWE, I mean, and, and throw out, throw out that one. We already know. I mean, the first time Nakamura was in NXT, I mean, that was, I think, um, it was the it was the most in demand secondary market ticket that WWE ever had was that that show in Dallas with Nakamura on it. Um, it it has probably been broken since then, maybe once or twice, but at that point in time, it was the highest. Um, and and that was Nakamura years ago. And there's more people familiar with New Japan now than there were when Nakamura made the move. So yeah, they're gonna know who you know they'll know who Okada is. Um, but you know, from an Okada standpoint, you know, it's, there's, you know, it's, it's the jury's out, you know, it's like, I could go and throw numbers. I know that, that there's people in AEW who think he's coming, um, you know, or, or confident about it, but, um, it's not like the door is shut and, and, um, and he's playing it smartly. You know, I mean, someone, someone in WWE just texted me and goes, the guy's got the bidding war now. <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, and someone else told me that too. And goes, oh, I think there's gonna be a bidding war. And I go like, well, shouldn't you congratulate him then? He's playing it smart. So he's yep. playing it smart. And he's going to go somewhere. And he's going to make money. And um, whoever wants him more will likely be the one who gets him. 
and then they'll have to figure out how to make it work because they're going to have, whether it's AEW or WWE, they're going to have a very large financial um, investment in the guy to get him. And in doing so, it kind of makes you want to, you know, make sure that, that, that you push him, then you get your re return on the investment. So um, he'll get the chance. Um, but again, like, will the AEW or WWE audience, after the original, you know, big thing, which there will there will be, after that, when he's there week after week, um, you know, you, you, you know, he's going to have to be in storylines and he's going to have to, you know, you have to deliver the promos here. It's not just about going out there and doing the matches. We know he can do the matches and we know there's all kinds of new dream matches and they're on both sides. You know, there's, you can list the guys in both companies that he can go out there with and have a great, great match and, and, and will. So, but you know, you have to keep that, um, you know, he's got to be in the storyline and be able to do the promos and, you know, or whatever he's, it's got to be something that's, marketable or you've spent like a ton of money on somebody <laughs> so um but from the new japan standpoint it's huge yeah i mean it's huge and it's the other part that's huge is that um it's it's a reality of you know between the yen and the fact that aw and ww have grown so much and new japan hasn't to where almost anyone um that works there that one of those companies really wants can go i mean we've seen it with jay white we've seen it with will osprey we've seen it with okada all this year and you know we talk about like what's next and it's like well if yoda suji gets really over and becomes like this big star you think that that AEW and wwe aren't going to want him you know or shota umino or or um um yuyo imura you know, just the fact that the TNA didn't do shit with them doesn't mean, or impact, doesn't mean that 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 you, you can't do something with them in this country. Um, so it's it's going to be a way of life. And then how does the Japanese public react to their group being a feeder system rather than the final destination? Because, you know, for years in japan new japan was it you know wwe is nice they come in tour we know they're bigger but you know the, the mentality with the, the audiences but new japan's so much better so you know wwe being bigger doesn't really mean anything but now it's like you know anyone if, if new japan becomes the feeder system it doesn't matter that their work rate might be better it's just not gonna it's it's gonna be tough i mean like i don't care where you are in the world that's hurt every you know company in the world as soon as it becomes evident that you're not um you know you're the the feeder system for the united states um it hurt japanese baseball too mm -hmm. so you know i mean um you know it's it's um you know the the interest in japan in baseball you know a lot of it is now ma is now major league baseball so rather than japanese league baseball yeah one of the memes out there yesterday or maybe the jokes was that uh Okada's just going to sign with the Los Angeles Dodgers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Tony Khan made a tweet yesterday about how 2024 is going to be great next Y and Z. And then I saw the dynamite rating and I was like, Oh, that's why he was tweeting. He what, time did he, what, what time did he tweet? It was before the dynamite rating came out for sure. Because I okay. was, I okay. Was I, I will, I will, I will only tell you that, that, um, if you look at when I posted the dynamite rating um, yesterday, it was literally like when it came out. So he posted that before the dynamite rating, it would have nothing to do with it. If okay. he posted it after I posted the dynamite rating, and I don't know, you know, if he posted it after, then yes, it would be the dynamite. Rating. I think it was before. So then it has nothing to do with it. That might be that might be Okada. It might okay, be so. Mercedes. It might be, you know, uh, might be somebody else. Um, it might just be. He sat down and he's got some idea that he just thinks is really going to work. It might be they, you know, the one thing that's happened this week that I've heard is everyone's, you know, they're starting to think now that we're gearing towards the revolution pay-per-view, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's like, you know, wait a minute, like, like this isn't going to be, I mean, we could all be into wrong, but my gut says this isn't going to be your 140,000 by pay-per-view. Um, you know, this, this might be a real big one and that's probably got him excited. He's got you know, they're going to get the card ahead of time. I mean, I think that this is like, you know, this, this is going to be like, like, uh, like a, the, a Wembley or a forbidden door, you know, I mean, it's not going to be just another pay-per-view. 
Yes, absolutely. But then, and you know, I'm kind of buying into the the, the Tony Khan tweet stuff. Then, uh, New Japan Global's Twitter account posts the Kazuchika Okada story, and about an hour after that, Tony Khan replied to his own tweet with a graphic or a, a screenshot of a character from the old HBO show The Wire. Uh, the drug dealer Marlo, and under the the photo it says, "My name is my name." So I, I took that as like a flex of some sort of him being really happy with something that that's happening. But because it was so close to the Kazuchika Okada tweet, I just assumed that oh maybe maybe they're getting Okada. But in reading your story, it does seem like uh, you know people believe that they may have been the front runner, but it's still you know he's still a free agent. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't even want to say front runner, but I know that they are, I know that they are confident and expect it. Um, but you know, WWE might be confident and expect it too, you know, thinking that we're WWE, you know, but, um, and, and you know, the, the, the one thing also with, with, with Tony Khan, when it comes to these things in in the sense that the first off where Tony Khan's probably going to be higher because he, um, you know, it's not like nobody knows what's going on, but he is more into, um, you know, Japanese wrestling and Japanese wrestling stars because he was a legitimate Japanese wrestling fan. I mean, he went to, um, you know, the New Japan shows at the Walker Theater or whatever the, the Walker, whatever the Walker Auditorium in Long Beach, you know, like before he was ever in pro wrestling. I mean, that's just what he was. I mean, other guys, did not necessarily do that so with wwe there's still the mentality of it's an unknown we can't uh they're not worth you know our main event money unless they're our main eventers or yeah. we're rating or we're rating them from aew where we have to pay them like cody rhodes right or, or jade right you know then they're worth it because they're, we're rating somebody but rating somebody we're not you know new japan's not our our rival we're trying to kill you know or anything like that so yeah, of course we know he's. Of course, everyone knows he's a great wrestler. But to us, does he mean more than Sami Zayn, right? Where with with Tony, it's like he's means more than Sami Zayn, you know, <laughs> because he's Okada, you know. Yeah. So it's like, so WWE has to kind of get into that thing, and they may with this one because, oh, again, I mean, I look at the Okada thing right now this afternoon, and it's like, man, he's he's turned out to be a real smart one because now. Now, right now on this day, somebody's going to lose. And you get two guys who don't want to lose to each other, you know, between Nick Khan and Tony Khan, right? They do not want to lose to each other. So, I mean, that makes Okada is going to be a very rich man because of that. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.